Welcome to Wild Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to explain the difference between the area underneath the curve when we consider the area below the x-axis positive or negative area. Now, what we're going to do here is calculate the displacement and the distance covered by an object, which is subject to this equation right here. We have an equation that tells you the velocity of the object as a function of time is equal to 2t squared minus 8t plus 6. So here we have a graph that represents the velocity as a function of time. You can see that the velocity is positive until one second have elapsed. Now the velocity is negative until three seconds have elapsed. And then you can see the velocity becomes positive again. So we're going to find both the displacement and the distance covered by the object between zero and three seconds to see what we're going to end up with. So, what is the displacement from t equals 0 to t equals 3 seconds? And what is the distance covered from t equals 0 to t equals 3 seconds? So first we're going to calculate the displacement, which means we're going to simply calculate the area need to curve from, from 0 to 3. And in the case of displacement, negative area is indeed negative displacement. So let's see what we get. So this becomes equal to 2t cubed over 3 minus 8t squared over 2 plus 6t evaluated from 0 to 3. Obviously when we plug in the 0 we get nothing so we only have to worry about the positive limit or the upper limit. So we get um, 3 cubed that's 27 divided by 3 which is 9 times 2 which is 18 minus that is 9 times well that 9 times 4 because 8 divided by 2 is 4 so 4 times 9 which is 36 and plus 3 times 6, which is 18. 18 plus 18 is 36, so this clearly becomes 0, which means the displacement is equal to 0. That physically means that the object starts moving, and after 3 seconds, it will be in exactly the same spot as it started. Here you can see that it has positive velocity, so it's moving forward, but here it has negative velocity, so it's moving backward. By the time 3 seconds have elapsed, it has reached the same place that it started when the motion started over here. So that's what we mean by displacement, where you started or where you end up minus where you started, and if that is in the very same place, very same location, the displacement will be zero. That doesn't mean that the object didn't cover any distance, it actually did move forward, then it moved backwards, it covered distance, but displacement as a vector quantity simply means the difference between the end position and the beginning position and if it's in the same place then that difference is equal to zero. So now let's find the distance covered. To do that we have to do two integrals. We first have to integrate from zero to one which is forward motion and then from one to three which is backwards motion. So let's see what we get when we do that. So first we're going to integrate from zero to one the same function that would be two t squared plus 8, oop, not plus 8t, but minus 8t, I believe, minus 8t um, times dt. So this becomes equal to 2t cubed over 3 minus 8t squared over 2 plus 6t evaluated from 0 to 1. And of course, when you plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. But when you plug in the upper limit, you get the following. That will be 2 thirds minus 4 and plus 6. So that would be a positive 2 plus 2 thirds that would be equal to 8 thirds. So that means that in the first one second the, the object has covered a distance of 8 thirds meter assuming that this is in meters per second for velocity and time is in seconds so that distance cover would be 8 thirds meters from 0 to 1 and that would be in a forward motion. Now let's figure out the distance covered going from, from second 1 to second 3 for the next two seconds. So we're going to integrate this. We're going to integrate from 1 to 3 the same function. That would be 2t squared minus 8t plus 6 dt. And again, the integral is going to be equal to 2t cubed over 3 minus 8t squared over 2 plus 6t evaluated from 1 to 3. Now we have to plug in both the upper and the lower limit because we're going to get different values. 
So this for the upper limit, we're going to get the following. So we get, um, let's see, that's 27, that's 9, that's 18. Minus 36 and plus 18. So of course we get the same result that we got over here. That would be for the upper limit. Now we're going to subtract from that the lower limit. So when we plug in the lower limit, we get uh, 2 thirds and we get minus 4 and we get plus 6. And so that would be equal to 8 thirds, but we have a minus in front of it, that's a minus 8 thirds. So this means that we covered a distance of 8 thirds meter in the negative direction. We were going backwards. So here we're going forward, here we're going backwards. But in essence, you travel distance in both directions. You went this far from 0 to 1 seconds. You traveled this far from 1 to 3 seconds in a negative direction. So the total distance covered, if you call this A1, and you call this A2, so this here would be A1, and this here would be A2. Then, if you want to indicate the total distance traveled, that is going to be equal to A1 plus the absolute value of A2, which in this case is going to be 8 thirds, plus the absolute value of minus 8 thirds, which is equal to 16 thirds, so the total distance traveled is the total area, both positive and negative area combined. And if it's negative area, you just take the absolute value of it, because essentially that has a different meaning than when you calculate the total displacement. So notice that negative area sometimes does have a real meaning, and that's how it's done.